The world of computers and digitalization is causing a trend of automation within the world today. But what exactly is automation? What are the different dimensions of it? What does it mean to you as an organization? That's what I'm going to talk about here today. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. And we're an independent consulting firm that helps clients throughout the world with their digital transformation journeys. And for several decades now, organizations have been talking about automation. They've been looking at ways to be more efficient, more productive, more profitable, more effective, all of those things. But automation is a very broad word. What exactly does that mean? That's exactly what I want to dive into here today. First, it helps to look at history and also look at how automation has evolved in recent years and how digital technologies have evolved in recent years. If we go back many decades to when computers were first being adopted by organizations, most of the focus was on very simple data collection, data capture, and really centralizing and gathering data electronically that had previously been stored on paper or maybe spreadsheets. And so in the 1970s and the 1980s, organizations for the first time were starting to capture data within computer systems so that they could have that centralized visibility into their operations and their financial results. Now, if we fast forward to the 2020s, automation and digital technologies in general are certainly doing what they had always been doing, which is decentralized data, as we talked about. But now it's also adding other layers of benefits, such as streamlining workflows and making sure that business processes are as efficient as possible. It's also focused on providing more insights into what's happening within the organization. So in other words, rather than just providing top line numbers, it's providing more deeper insights into what exactly is happening and what's driving some of the financial results of different organizations throughout the world. And we're even seeing in some cases, and we're gonna talk more about this later in the video, but we're seeing in some cases where low skill, high volume types of business processes, very mundane, high volume transactional processes are being completely automated nowadays by automation. So automation over the years has really evolved from just simply providing digitization of data to now providing more efficiency, more top line revenue results, more insights and deeper understanding of business operations. So the core and sort of fundamental foundation of automation is software automation. And this is a continuation of a trend that started decades ago which is the computerization of back office processes, things like ERP systems that capture data related to financial information or inventory levels, stock locations in a warehouse, that sort of thing. But in addition to just capturing data, software automation is also making workflows easier. So it's tying together end-to-end -end business processes across an entire operation. So this is really one of the big benefits of enterprise resource planning or ERP systems or customer relationship management slash sales systems or supply chain tools. All those sorts of technologies are meant to tie together business processes across different functions and disciplines within an organization. So software automation is at its core what's driving a lot of the automation, but as we'll talk about in the next segment of this video, that's just the core foundation of what automation really is and what some of the real potential is. That's sort of the core foundation and there's other technologies and other forms of automation that can take your organization even further. Now another technology and form of automation that's really evolving in the last several years is the concept of robotics and sensors. And probably the easiest way to think about robotics and sensors is if you think about a manufacturing shop floor. Many of those business processes and uh, production processes have been automated by robots that are physically moving products around and assembling products. You also have robots in warehouses that are moving inventory from location to location or moving it to the staging area to be shipped to customers. Those are examples of how robotics is being used throughout many organizations. Now, it's not just the robots that are being automated, it's the data that those robots are capturing. So that's capturing data about inventory locations, about work in progress status, quality issues, productivity, metrics, all those sorts of things are being captured within robotics. And that data is then being pushed back to computer systems or the software automation that we talked about in the previous segment. 
So when we think about automation, it's not just the core back office software that's being automated. You also have physical automation using physical robots and all the sensors that go along with that. Now bringing together the two previous points around software automation and robotics, you have a third type of automation, which is robotic process automation. And despite the name robotic, there's not actually a robot or a physical robot involved in robotic process automation but it's a function within a software system that acts like a robot. So it's something that automates and does the work of what a human might have historically done. For example, if you have any sort of transaction that doesn't require a lot of skill, doesn't require a lot of human intelligence to do, but it's a high volume type of activity that can become very efficient as an organization grows, robotic process automation can be a way to automate those processes. A good example of robotic process automation would be purchase order processing. So when you go to procure any sort of product or service, you typically issue a purchase order, you receive delivery of what's been purchased, and then you ultimately issue payment. Now, what happens is when you have that purchase order, eventually you're going to get invoiced by the supplier, and you need to double check and do a three-way match to make sure that you have a purchase order that reflects what's being invoiced, and that you've actually received delivery of what you're being invoiced for. That's considered the three-way match. And so robotic process automation can automate that and actually do that for you and kick out the exceptions. So humans aren't having to process every single purchase order and invoice that goes to that purchase order. Robotic process automation is doing that for them. But in cases where there's a problem or an exception or where the RPA technology senses that there might be an anomaly, it'll kick that out to humans so that the humans can focus on the exceptions rather than transacting all the manual processes that go along with that. Another type of automation that takes RPA technology one step further is going to be technologies like AI, machine learning, and intelligent automation. So these are technologies that not only automate business processes and do the business processes for you, but they're actually looking to the future and trying to predict and learn from data, learn the patterns and start to understand what is happening within an operation or a business process. So I don't want to get too hung up on slicing hairs and distinguishing between these three things, AI, machine learning, and intelligent automation. But what I will say is that AI is a form of intelligent automation, and machine learning is a type of technology that supports AI. So machine learning is at the core fundamental root of really looking at data and learning what's happening with the data. And it's not really programmed necessarily to do things in advance the machine learning is just learning what the patterns are and starting to anticipate what will happen with future data sets. Artificial intelligence is really the way that you end up using that machine learning to apply algorithms to predict future decision making. So this is, of all the technologies we're talking about here today and all the different automation opportunities, this is the most advanced. And this is where the world is headed. Well, most organizations have some level of software automation Many of them are now evolving and building on those capabilities to get to robotic process automation, and also now AI, machine learning, and intelligent automation. So this whole bucket is a whole nother dimension or layer of automation that's important to understand as you look to your digital strategy for the future. So a big lingering question for all this type of automation is what does this mean to humans? What does this mean to potential displacement of jobs? Will we have jobs in the future with all this automation happening? And to be fair, this is a question that has been lingering in our society for decades now. Ever since the introduction of computers and the early, early stages of robotics, people have wondered, will this cause technology to displace humans to the point that we're no better off than we were before the technology? This is a question that I don't have a very good answer for, but what I will say, is that if we look at history and how technology has evolved and changed and affected people's jobs, technology and automation in general is absolutely going to disrupt our lives. It's going to change our lives. And so the key here is how we help people through that transition. And what we also find through history and through where we're headed in the future with our current clients and organizations we work with at Third Stage is that this types of technology and automation is really creating opportunities for people to not have to do more mundane tasks but it's allowing them to do more strategic tasks and to do things that are more enjoyable and require a more advanced skill set. And so it's a great opportunity for people to learn and develop, but the key is we have to help people through that transition. It won't happen naturally. 
So the key to understanding automation is also understanding what the impact is to your organization and to humans and understanding how you're going to help your humans and your employees through that entire transformation. So I hope this has provided you some context and understanding of what automation is. And for more information about automation and all the different technologies we've talked about here today, as well as other technologies that we have not talked about in this video, I encourage you to download our annual digital transformation report, which contains a number of best practices and reviews of different types of technologies. And it's a great place to start to really fully understand the world of digital technologies and digital transformation and to get ideas and understanding of what the different types of options are available to you. So I encourage you to download that along with other resources that I've included links to below. So I hope you found this information useful and hope you have a great day.